Tesla earnings surprised many Tesla stock investors and a buying opportunity is incoming. In the after hours, Tesla stock is already down about 6%. If we look at expectations, basically the numbers that actually came in in terms of earnings per share, as expected, actually a tiny little bit of a beat here, but really it's in line with expectations. The revenue was a small, tiny miss, but looking at the gross profit margin right here, some people are strongly disappointed that it is only 19.3% instead of above 20%. And looking at Rob Maurer's calculation right here for automotive gross margin, excluding credits, it is only 19%. And Wall Street looks at that and does not like what it sees. The consensus was above 21 percent troy was expecting 19.7 percent and that is why we are getting this buying opportunity it is now down six percent in the after hours but should we long-term tesla stock investors really be worried about this is this a big deal or is this really just another buying opportunity that wall street and traders will be completely ignorant of this is Q4 report of Tesla's earnings. And as you can see, free cash flow was $1.4 billion. However, in Q1, we only had free cash flow of $0.4 billion. Operating cash flow did decrease as well from $3.3 billion from Q4. But $2.5 billion is still a very good number. So I'm pretty happy with this, actually. And if you are wondering why Tesla is not doing a stock buyback, well, this is why. Their free cash flow is only $400 million. The difference between operating cash flow and free cash flow is that free cash flow has to take out all of the uh, capital expenditures, which means Tesla spending a lot of money on building factories, expanding new equipment, stuff like that. I mean, that lathe drop factory that makes mega packs is not going to build itself as well as Giga Austin and Giga Berlin. These factories are expanding a lot still. And we just had a new announcement of a mega pack factory in china as well and the cybertruck is going to go into production elon said in q3 by the end of q3 hopefully we have first deliveries of the cybertruck so expect q4 maybe even early next year unless things go really smoothly then q3 and here's what Tesla is saying about all of this. In the current macroeconomic environment, we see this year as a unique opportunity for Tesla to dominate everyone else, is really what we are saying. As many car makers are working through challenges with the unit economics of their EV programs, we aim to leverage our position as a cost leader. Here is Tesla, the big dog, and here is basically every competitor that is going to survive and they have to come for the ride wherever they want it or not clearly they are doing it against their will they are just dragged but when asked on the earnings call elon did not really admit that they are dragging competition like that in 1913 henry ford introduced the moving assembly line in highland park michigan and the price of a model t which would had already you know been undercutting cars around the time fell another 70 or 80 percent and hundreds of rival car companies went bust yeah uh, i'm wondering if if history is repeating itself here elon yes it is although elon and tasta they can't really say that they are going to do it and really they shouldn't because that would be considered possibly as monopolistic practices for example google says oh we are not in the search business no 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 what are you talking about search no we are in the advertising business don't even look at this 93 percent market share number no there's no ev business there's only a vehicle making business yeah don't look at our market share in the US, which is at 50% right now, although it is going to go down. So Tesla is not really that concerned about monopolistic practices possibly, but still, I don't think it is in our benefit to really advertise that Tesla is going to dominate the EV industry in the US completely. There is no benefit for Elon and the Tesla team to say this on the earnings call. 
investors already are smart enough to figure it out, but we have to keep up the appearances for the regulators. We want to appear friendly. Just to be clear, overall, in the long term, I think it does make a lot of sense for Tesla to look only at the car market share and not so much at the EV market share. In the shorter term, though, and when I say shorter term, I mean five to maybe seven or eight years, I think it does make sense to look at both because if you just look at the car market share, of course, these numbers will look great no matter what, but the EV market share also shows how fast are others adopting and is Tesla keeping that 20% market share? I think that 20% number for the long term is quite important. In the short term, sure, Tesla is only competing against gasoline powered cars really, but in the long term, Tesla will be competing against all vehicles, including EVs. And even right now, Tesla is already competing against other EVs. It just doesn't really benefit Tesla to really say that if Tesla is losing market share in a specific uh, country. But short term, whatever the numbers look like, I don't, I don't think they matter much because Tesla is going to have a next generation vehicle, the Cybertruck and all of these other uh, cheaper vehicles in the future that will bring back the market share higher in certain markets. And that the recent pattern of cuts with you is way ahead of the cost curve compared to competition. Are, is this, it seems like it's a calculated strategy, not, not, just, not just in reaction to competition or changing supply demand in the market, but you're, you know, could we, could we catalyze some Darwinian forces in the EV market? Well, I mean, we're, we're not trying to say take, take pricing actions in order to be deliberately uh, to deliberately undermine competitors or anything like that. We, we, we really don't think about competitors that much. We just look at, you know, do people like our cars? How can we make the product better? Uh, can they afford our cars? Um, and, uh, you know, the sort of the things like improving service and, and whatnot. Um, but, but like I said, we, we do have this un uh, unique strategic advantage that, that we have an, we're making a, a car that, uh, if auto autonomy pans out, and we think it will, um, where that that asset is actually will, will be worth a hell of a lot more in the future than it is now. So it is technically possible to sell it at zero profit, but still have the net present value of future cash flows associated with that asset be sig very significant. Yeah. And service and charging and insurance and all of these other ongoing revenue streams that other companies don't have. Yeah. Certainly, we want all EVs to succeed too. We just want to say that we're not in like some malicious attack to try to discourage oh. everybody. <laughs> Definitely not. We're, we're, we're like opening up uh, superchargers. We've made our patents available for free. So it's like we're trying to be helpful here, you know. So um, it, we're, we're not trying to, we're not out to, to destroy competitors or anything like that. We're trying to help competitors, frankly, um, in any way that we can. We are trying to help our competitors go bankrupt in any way we can specifically by cutting prices so that they cannot sell them profitably is really what <laughs> Tesla is doing. Look, Tesla and Elon Musk, they cannot say that they are decreasing our prices so that we crush all other EV automakers. If Elon said that, he would have a government on his back. The government, of course, is already on Elon's back, but it would be even more. And if it wasn't for billions of dollars for government funding for Tesla to open up its superchargers, I doubt that Tesla would be opening the superchargers in the US for our EVs right now. Tesla, of course, is committed to its mission to transition everyone to sustainable energy quicker, but it is hard to overlook additional government funding that is certainly helping Tesla to make that decision. And speaking of patents, while I really like Tesla's approach, I don't think it is as altruistic as it first appears, although it does help startups, certainly. I don't think it helps legacy automakers as much as you might initially believe just by seeing that, oh, Tesla lets everyone use their patents. If any other automaker takes any patents from Tesla and uses that, they basically promised that Tesla could use any of their patents as well, as well as they also promised that they would not be able to sue anyone else for using their own patents. For example, it doesn't even have to be Tesla, but let's say BYD looks at Volkswagen's patents and says, oh yeah, 
Volkswagen, you have some nice patents there. We're going to take some. And then if Volkswagen sues BYD for using these patents, then now Tesla could sue Volkswagen for using Tesla's patents because Volkswagen is preventing BYD from using Volkswagen's patents. And this is not helping to advance the industry overall. And if we come back to the earnings report, Tesla says we aim to leverage our position as a cost leader. This is a warning to all legacy automakers that are trying to go against Tesla. Tesla is saying, we will crush you. So maybe, yeah, maybe you should not try or cut your prices already. And in reality, Tesla cares about the competition so little <laughs> that Tesla is not really even acknowledging that the competition really even exists because Elon Musk on the earnings call just said, oh yeah, we don't even think about our competition. We just think about, can consumers afford our vehicles? Are our vehicles good? If yes, great. And if the answer is no, we just try to improve them. Tesla did have quite a currency exchange impact of $800 million. That is huge. And that certainly drags all of the numbers down. This is also quite interesting to look at higher raw material commodity logistics and warranty costs contributed to lower profits. I repeat, higher raw material costs, not lower raw material costs. We know that lithium has come down a lot, but that's not the case for everything that matters. It is also interesting that the logistics costs actually are a headwind. We did see trains, for example, go from Shanghai to one of the cities in China. And usually, I think you would be able to ship these vehicles. But if you used a ship, then these vehicles would not have been delivered before the end of the quarter. So I think Tesla is still doing quite a strong end of a quarter push here, despite that having an impact on total profits. Tesla's cash is now $22.5 billion, which I like. Definitely no buybacks right now. Tesla may have even lower profits going forward temporarily. As I mentioned many times before, I see a possibility where all of the earnings could be wiped out completely temporarily. And then I believe they would come back really strong because all of the competition would be destroyed. While in the meantime, Tesla builds up economies of scale. We are seeing the growth in total miles accumulated on full self-driving. This is important and that is good. And this is my favorite part of the whole earnings report. Look at this energy storage increasing in terms of deployments. 360% year over year in Q1 to almost 4 gigawatt hours. And this is clearly growing exponentially. And then look at the operating margin. It is above S&P 500, which is great and well above the auto industry. Overall, I am pretty happy with the earnings, although the stock is taking quite a big dump. This is mostly just short term investors being scared of what is going to happen in the short term. Me as a long term investor, I am focused on the next generation vehicle. I'm focused on the Cybertruck. I am focused on full self-driving and all of these are looking just as good as they did before. This actually lets me acquire Tesla stock at a cheaper price and expect a lot of talk about Tesla having to advertise. Oh, this is going to be fun. And this is an important message to all Tesla stock investors. My name is Matt Postius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.